Hello and welcome to a special edition of Chaotic Kitchen. Today we're going to get crafty. In addition to making delicious goodies out of plants, I also do crafts with paper. It started off with me making beads and jewellery, like this one, out of paper. And then that's kind of grown and progressed into other things as well. You might be wondering, what does this have to do with a cooking channel? I'll tell you. <laughs> this is the bottle that I use for cooking oil. I buy five litre kind of jars of sunflower oil and decant it into this, which was a Patron bottle. The bottle's got a cork stopper <laughs> and it's separated. And because it's got oil all over it, I can't glue it back down together. For months, I've been thinking I'm going to replace that with something and maybe make something to go on the top of it. And then thought that might be an interesting one to do for the channel, give other people ideas as well. I've cut down a champagne cork because that bottle's too narrow for a wine cork. So I just need something a bit fatter. And then I've got a really long, thin screw. So I'm going to drive that up through the middle of the cork. For those who don't know, my day-to-day -day job is doing telesales. So in between calls, I did a little mock-up of what I'm going to do. To make this, I got a cocktail stick, like a wooden toothpick, and wrapped strips of paper around it. So that's roughly the kind of thing that we're going to be doing. And I'll then cover the whole thing in lots of varnish to give it a bit of durability. And that will hopefully give me something with a couple of years at least of life and use. I'll do a quick little show and tell with you so you can get an idea of what sort of things I make. This is a picture frame that I did. So this is like a charity shop wooden frame. This raised edge there and there, that's an Amazon envelope that I doubled, glued together and covered with a page of a magazine. These parts here, that's sheet music. So I just cut a strip of it, coiled it up and then pushed it out. This is a necklace that I made for my mum's birthday. So again, using beads made from sheet music and then got copper wiring. I think that was a TV aerial that I stripped down and then some little seed beads. The necklace I'm wearing, that beading is made from wallpaper. And then this one, those type, that's made from a water damaged book. If you've got tryptophobia, a fear of lots of small holes, just look away for a second. I've also made these things. Now these don't really have a specific use as such. This is the paper cones, which is how I made the, the picture frame and then just stacked them all up and glued it together. And then this one, same principle. I think that was a National Geographic magazine. For the bottle stopper, what I'm going to use is this book. If you've seen the tempeh stuffed mushroom, you'll see me talking about the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. I picked up this book when I went. It was in the gift shop. They were throwing them out. The sculptor is Andy Goldworthy. So he's known for doing kind of wild and wonderful things out in nature. The weight of the paper, it's not cardstock or anything like that. It's just fairly weighty paper. It's all going to be nature kind of colours, greens, that sort of thing. There's some gorgeous colours on this one. The way I'll construct this is using triangular strips of paper that are wound on themselves. And because the size decreases towards the point, you get glimpses of the colour as you go down. This is all going to be filmed top down, like a proper crafting video for you. And I'm going to have some music on in the background. I'm going to drink some beers, just have a nice little Friday night. I'll grab all of my supplies and I'll see you in a second in a top down view. I'll go through the equipment that we're going to need for the project. We need the paper that you've chosen for your project. I went for different colours because I wanted some variety, but feel free to keep to a single colour. We need a cork and a long screw. We can create additional lengths, but we also need strength. So I'd go as long as you can find. Then a thinner screw to create a pilot hole. We need an awl or a hand drill even to pierce a hole into the cork. I've got a 30 centimetre ruler. It is plastic, but it's got a metal cutting edge. You need to be careful cutting plastic because your scalpel, the blade can go straight into it. You'll need some sort of cutting blade. I favour a scalpel, a box cutter or a Stanley knife or something like an X-Acto knife would work as well. I'd strongly recommend getting some sort of pencil or pen. You can eyeball it, but you'll likely make some really frustrating mistakes grabbed a variety of hair clips to hold the piece in place if I need to take breaks, that kind of thing. Glue is an absolute must in this project. I like these stick style ones as they're much less messy than PVA or Elmer's glue, that type. I'll use tape to anchor the first strip onto the screw and then to join each strip of paper together. I keep a bowl to hand when I'm crafting to use as a bin. Just keeps the workspace nice and clear. Is beer an essential piece of equipment? No, but hydration is. So get yourself a vessel or something wet and tasty. This step might not be necessary for you. Just have a look at the bottle and see how big the hole is. See if you've got any corks big enough. I cut it with a serrated blade. I just find it makes the job a little bit easier because you can trim down bits without much force. I'd already trimmed one down. It's very easy. Just nibble little wedges out and keep offering it up to the bottle until it fits snugly. I used a nail file like an emery board 
to lightly sand the cut edge of the cork where I'd cut it, just to make sure that there was a flush fit for the first layer of paper. I decided on starting the stack with a really wide disc that would completely cover the top of the cork. So I grabbed two smaller pages to use for that onto the cork stabbing. Remember that the narrow end goes in the bottom. Why am I telling you this? Because I forgot and carved the wrong end. <laughs> Didn't cause any problems, just wasted time and energy. To start, I drove the awl through the middle of the cork. You can measure it to get it exactly in the center. I just eyeballed it. Go slowly and if you find yourself drifting off center, just pull the awl back a little bit and reposition and go again. I then flip the cork and work from the other side to make sure it was even. The next step is to countersink the screw into the cork and this helps give a nice neat flush finish. The tapered style I have here is perfect for that. I put the screw head onto the cork and drew around it with a sharpie to give me a nice clear outline to cut out the hole again and try and get that in the center. I took the scalpel and chipped away little sections of the cork. Please be really careful when you do this. It's so easy to slip and stick yourself. I used the tip of the blade in and then rotated the cork itself rather than trying to move the blade around. I kept offering the screw up onto it just to make sure I was taking enough away and going back and taking out a little bit more. Once I got it roughly to the width and depth I wanted, I sanded off the Sharpie as I didn't want that near the oil. It will be sealed, but just in case. Then I drove the thinner screw up through the cork and that just helps ease the way for the main structural screw. It's perhaps not essential that you do this, but I needed to make it as little stress on the joints of my fingers as I could. My fingers did get sore from squeezing the screw head, so I found wrapping it in a paper towel helped a little bit. Once the screw came out through the other end, I worked it back out again and then started with the fatter screw. It really started hurting my fingers though, so I grabbed a pair of pliers and then holding the screw in the jaws of the pliers worked like a vice. Made the task really, really easy. Once I got the cork as far down the screw as it would go, I could see I needed to nibble out a little bit more just to get it a bit deeper. So I pulled the cork back about half an inch or so and was able to just cut little bits away. That section of the screw had no threads, which made it much easier to slide the cork back and forth to see if it fit. I got some needle nose pliers just to help pull the little bits of trimmed stuff out. Perfectly flush, beautiful. Before I started cutting the paper, I changed the blade on the scalpel to make sure that the cuts were as precise and clean as possible. If you're not an adult or you've got limited mobility in your hand, please, please, please ask for assistance with this. Or buy one of those craft knives that has a snap off blade. Please also make sure that you wrap the old blades up carefully before throwing them out. I keep mine, I'm sure I'll find these them at some point. I chose this image for the first layer because it was quite small the image on the page, but it was set out across two pages. I trimmed the white part away to get a sense of how much I had to work with. This is where having the scalpel and the ruler comes in handy. You can do it with scissors, but it means drawing a load of lines and then it's super easy to end up with jagged lines when you cut it. For each of the sections, we need the inside. That's the end closest to the screw to be the fattest. And then we start graduating the width down until it becomes a fine point. And that's how we make that beveled edge. Along the vertical sides, I marked out one centimeter sections, repeated that at the bottom, and then connected the mark with the ruler and cut slices. You can draw the full line if you prefer, but a small mark is adequate for me. Just take a little time to line up the ruler before cutting. That gave me a nice little stack of strips to start with. I cut a small piece of tape and stuck one end to one of the strips and then trimmed it to a narrower slice. Ideally, you do wanna make sure that the tape isn't wider than the paper strip, especially further out into the bevel because you'll see it peeking through. I tried to cut the tape a little thinner than the strip of paper, but you need a gentle touch that I don't really have. <laughs> Otherwise, you can cut through the top layer of paper and take some of the collar off. I pulled the strip against a thin piece of dowel to curl it, like a gift ribbon. That helps train it for wrapping it tightly. This is, in my opinion, one of the fiddliest parts of the project, attaching the tape to the screw. It has a frustrating habit of slipping off once you start wrapping the strip. All I can say is to persevere with it, really. <laughs> once I was confident that the strip was firmly attached, I then started winding the strip around the screw and adding some glue to anchor it in place. Trust me on this one, glue as you go. <laughs> Losing minutes of work because of a hand spasm isn't worth a few pennies of glue. I then worked my way around the screw and started adding the other strips. You can join all of the strips in one go before you start attaching it to the screw, which I do in fact do for the other sections. Not sure why I didn't at this point. Add a little glue right after the join to help secure it. Once I had the cork covered, it was time to start creating the bevel. Using my ruler, I marked strips that decreased by one millimeter at a time. The first strip was one centimeter at the end. The next strip had one end of one centimeter and then the other end was 0.9 centimeters. 
the next was 0 0.9 to 0 0.8 and so on. This angle makes it difficult to see the width decrease properly, but it's there, I promise. At this point, I got bored of using the ruler, so switched to lining up the top and the bottom and just marking the decrease that way. I'm likely making this sound way more complicated than it was. <laughs> I did figure out a better technique further into the build that will illustrate this a bit better for you. I started trying out different ways of marking. I tried using the blade, but I found it created lumps unless I was super careful and if I was you know, slightly the wrong angle. So this is what we want here, a small decrease in size from one end to the other. And then it's just back to winding and gluing. Hopefully you'll see there's a, a glimpse of dark brown behind the strip on top. That one millimeter decrease exposes the color underneath at the same time as creating a curved side. You really do need to pay attention when wrapping that decrease. The strip needs to be in the center of itself, otherwise you won't get an even appearance. At this point, I realized it would be much quicker to have one end attached to the main body of the paper while cutting the other end. It just saves having to make two marks. Here's a shot to illustrate what I mean about keeping the strip in the center. And then here you can see I finally cottoned on to cutting and joining all the strips at the same time. I can't say whether it saves a significant amount of time per se, but for me, it gets the job done in one go. And then I can move on to the next task rather than constantly toing and froing, putting down tools, moving stuff around. This part always gives me joy. When you lay that final point down, you can see the finished shape. I made the stopper over a series of nights and sitting on a hard kitchen chair had murdered my back. So I moved into the living room for the rest of the work. I wanted the other sections much fatter than the one above the cork. So I just picked a random width and hoped for the best. A lot of this process comes down to instinct. Once you get a feel for it, you'll start knowing what sizes will work for you. The next section was going to be a big one, so I had to start with a very wide strip. If you're doing one this size, or bigger even, keep in mind that you're going to need much more paper than you think you initially will, so be sure to have plenty of paper. I ran out, so I had to start colour matching with other pages. If you can, do your marks on a pale or blank side as it makes it much easier to see those marks. Here I made an indent in the paper with the tip of the pencil and then flipped it over and marked it with the pencil lead. The cat started getting really excited by the dangling strip. One of their beds is under the table here. <laughs> so I rolled it up as I went and clamped it with a hair clip. I got into the flow of working the whole strip in one go, but that's going to be an individual preference. Some of you might preferring it the way I cut the first strip. It, you know, it can get a bit monotonous. Then it's just a case of repeating that same winding technique. This one was a ball shape, so I started the width decrease immediately. If you want a flat section, like I did on that one above the cork, then all you need to do is cut the strips at the same width until you have the diameter you want, and then start decreasing the sides. And I'll say it again because it's worth repeating, glue as you go. I decided to put glue on the entire strip to add some extra strength. So I grabbed a sheet of baking parchment. Do love me a multi-use product. The great thing about this type of glue is it's so easy to pick off any excess that splurges out the sides. Just wait for it to dry and it comes away nice and cleanly. Can you see here where there are kind of steps in places almost? That's because there wasn't enough of a decrease. That is the one drawback to not using a ruler. If you want it completely rounded and precise and exact, always use a ruler and really take your time when cutting as it's easy, very easy <laughs> to knock the ruler even a tiny fraction and that changes the angle of decrease. When you're gluing the point, be really liberal with the glue. I kept knocking the point on the lower section loose while I was working the upper one and that's why we glue as we go. You could try dabbing a little bit of super glue to get it really stuck in place. I didn't think of that until I'd finished the whole thing. For this section, I decided to start cutting from the point end first to have complete control over the top layer. Doing it that way also means there's no way you can run out of paper before finishing your point. Point is the most visible part of the piece, so give it plenty of time and patience to lay it down precisely. This type of glue takes several minutes to set, so you've got plenty of time to lift it and adjust it if you need to. This was going to be another thin section, so I decided to cut a page in half across the widest part and then stick it together to make the strips. It halves the amount of cutting and joining, especially as I then only have to tape every other section together. I started taping front and back just to give some extra support and grip. Sometimes the glue can make the tape lift off or soften the paper to the point that it just slips out from the tape that's on top. To cut the parallel strips, I folded the two pages in half. It worked fairly well, but you need to be careful and go slow so that you don't nudge the ruler because that can create a bowed center in the middle of the strip. I then stack the strips on top of each other and put them in a kind of size order. No matter how careful I am, there's always slight discrepancies. I was finding that because my cutting mat is old and therefore covered in the sediment of projects past, uh, sticking the tape to it to cut it down was leaving a build upon the tape and that you know stops the sticking properties of it. So I started sticking it onto my ruler 
instead and cutting it there, which worked quite well. This green strip on top is where I started to decrease the widths. You can see some irregularity in the flat part of the section. I'll likely never be completely spot on when I cut things. And I've made my peace with that fact. And if you want perfection, get yourself a laser cutter. This section was the last and I wanted it longer than the screw. I cut this little template from scrap paper. I needed to cut a notch into the strip so that it would fill in the tube that forms in the top because the screw takes up space in the middle. By cutting a notch, I can get one side of the strip fully tightened and create effectively a cap. Once I had the notch looking right, I unwound the strip and measured it. Yeah, measured it for once onto the actual paper. Rolling the end tight can be a little bit fiddly. So just keep rolling it up and rocking it between your fingers and it will get tighter and smaller. You can also use tweezers to help out with that. If like me, you create little tears as you're pulling it tight, don't worry, varnish will hide it. Once I trained it into the bend I wanted, I unwound and then slathered on loads of glue. No matter how much you try and get it tight, you will always be left with a small hole at the top. I decided to take advantage of that hole. That sounds so wrong. Um, <laughs> and put something fancy in there. Um, <laughs> My plan was to create a finial with a toothpick, so I used one just to make sure there'd be enough room. It was then time to fit the cap onto the screw. It's annoying and fiddly and you'll swear many, many times, but you'll get there. I believe in you. Just place it on top and keep wrapping and twisting. The pulling and twisting here will help anchor the thing onto the screw. I did you a little POV shot. Rolling it with you in front of me was awkward, so I hope you appreciate the detail. <laughs> the end was in sight and there we go. Now it was time to add some matte Mod Podge for protection and longevity. I created a little stand to make it easier to dry the stopper without it falling over. A chewing gum tub and some drawing pins worked really well. I started at the bottom near the cork, though I don't think it makes a difference where you start really. I just wanted to make sure I really paid attention to the join between the cork and the first layer, really getting some Mod Podge into the little gap. I took it slightly up onto the cork as well to ensure that there was a tight seal as I didn't want any oil finding its way inside. Feel free to use gloss. I just really like the satin finish of the matte. You can also use water-based wood varnish. I've used it on paper beads in the past. I'd suggest doing a test on a piece of off-cut first. Some varnishes will make the ink bleed on your paper. It's tempting to slather on a really thick layer, but it is honestly better to do a couple of thin coats to stop it running down the sides and then that creates bulging. I brush the varnish onto half of a section and then flipped it over just to make sure I got the edges all properly covered. Pop any air bubbles as you see them as they are visible once dry. Here it is the following day. I really wanted to leave it like this but I could feel some flex as I squeezed it so for the sake of durability I put another coat of Mod Podge on. Since doing it I thought it might be worth trying to use super glue. I've used that technique on draw knobs and it works really well. I have no idea what the screw is made out of and although there'll never be oil in direct contact with the cork I wanted to seal the screw head just to prevent any corrosion and contamination. I think it's always best to play it safe when it comes to food related stuff. I did this in two layers too. I laid it on heavy to fill in the drive. That's the part where the screwdriver goes and then built it up around that again making sure to get plenty of seal where the cork meets the screw. This is the stopper after a second coat. It's now time to finish off the top of it. You can see that the Mod Podge on the screw hasn't fully set it goes clear when it's dry but as long as there's a good kind of skin on there you're fine to work on it just be a bit gentle i'm using two little seed beads on the tip of a toothpick i have an abundance of jewelry making supplies so i just raided that for ideas i got them from ebay so have a look there or at your local craft shop for inspiration i put a section of toothpick into the hole and then used cuticle nippers to mark the length that i needed i transferred that measurement onto the piece with the beads hold on to the other end of it when you make that cut do as I say, not as I do, okay? Safely recovered, I'm happy to say. I wiggled it in gently. If it's too long, just snip little bits off or even sand it back a bit. Once I was happy with the fit and the length, I took the stick back out and dropped a little super glue on top. I did try gluing the beads as I put them on the stick, but then I couldn't push them onto the stick securely enough without everything getting stuck to everything else. I put some super glue into the hole and went to put the stick back in. Sadly, using the nippers to push the stick in meant I ended up snapping the top bead off. I started over with a bare stick and then dropped the beads on. No easy feat when you've got shaky hands like I do. I used the nippers to gently push the bead down, trying not to leave them in contact with the bead for too long. Sorry for the terrible framing here. Use your imagination for the smaller bead. Be sure to wipe off the excess super glue as you see it. I used the toothpick and wiped it off on a tissue rather than putting a tissue directly onto the piece. I then nipped off the little point of the stick at the top and used the nail file to lightly sand it flat. 
take care not to sand the bead too much because I think they're painted so you might end up losing the colour in patches. I didn't want that light colour at the end. I get stuck on little details that probably aren't even noticeable but I didn't have any gold paint or even nail varnish so I had to settle for this ice cappuccino colour. I put a little bit on the toothpick and dabbed it on that way. Far from a perfect match but it did the job okay. Here we are with the finished article. <laughs> And if I say so myself, I love the way it looks. I think it's worked out perfectly. Do a bit of a close-up detail of it, although you'll have seen most of it in the top-down view. But yeah, it's worked out very well. There's a couple of bits here and there where I'm not 100% happy with it. Like here, the strip dropped and I didn't catch it in time. I didn't notice it before varnishing it. In terms of functionality as well, it works really well. When I take it out of the bottle, I am trying to be mindful of grasping it here rather than at the top, just because this bit's going to be the strongest. But yeah, so it's worked fantastically well. The screw is sitting up a little bit raised. You can hopefully see that. So I'd maybe go deeper into the cork if you're bothered about that. But you know, it's inside, so I don't think it matters so much. But just make sure that you get a good amount of varnish on there. Non-toxic varnish as well. Even though it's not coming in direct contact with anything, you know, you never want to be in doubt that there's any trace elements or anything like that. So just as a precautionary measure. I think to say that was some paper, a screw and a cork, I think that's worked really well. Makes a fantastic gift because it's just, it looks very unique. Even if you made the same thing multiple times because of the variances that you get in the color, it might have the same shape, but it's always gonna look slightly different. So yeah, just a very effective way of reusing what otherwise would have ended up potentially in a recycling bin. If you're an existing subscriber and you've enjoyed this diversion from the usual content, make sure you let me know in the comments because I'll maybe do some more. Potentially, if there's a lot of interest, start up a different channel because you know, not every craft is going to be cooking related. Um, but yeah, and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and turn on notifications if you want lots of cooking and food related content coming your way every week. While you're waiting for next week's, have a look at this.